All right, part two. The idea is exactly the same as part one. So everything I just said in part one is also um, applies to part two. You need weights, but this time you need more than one weight. So I happen to have five here, five weights. I guess if you get one, you might as well get two. Why not? Uh, I happen to have five. Maybe you also have skewers. It's fine, but you need more than one. Because what we're going to be doing now are actually creating complexes of frequencies. And it sounds very fancy, uh, perhaps it is, but we're just going to be creating intervals and listening to those intervals, first with just one stop. So again, choose an interval. I'm going to choose something that's maybe not so original, but uh, why not? Major sixth, great. The next thing, you got it, choose a stop. Let's see, we have a flute harmonique, eight foot. And what you hear is, indeed, it's a major sixth. You've heard a major sixth before, you know how it sounds. But, again, that's the purpose of the exercise. Go down into the church and start listening. You want to listen to the vibrations that these two frequencies create together. These two frequencies create a complex frequency. That to us sounds like a major sixth, but I want you to listen as carefully as possible to that interval. Can you hear any beating? Beating occurs when two frequencies collide with each other. In a major sixth, that's pretty okay. There's not so many beatings there. Perfect intervals, such as a perfect fifth, um, depending on the temperament of your instrument, of course, don't have so many beats in them. But just now, listening to this sound, eight foot flute harmonique with the perfect fifth, I can hear subtle variations in the tone. The interval has clapped into one complex frequency. I can't tell that there's two pitches anymore. It's just one. And that's the point of this exercise. Try to hear both of these pitches as one singular complex of sound. I can hear very subtle beats. I can almost count them. I'm not sure if you can hear that at home, but in the church, it's quite, it's quite amazing, actually. Very simple. There's a very slow rhythm. The tone has waves in it almost. It comes to you, and then it recedes again. If I count with my watch, it's about one and a half per second. It's a little faster. So when you're listening in the church, try to completely lose yourself in this interval. Focus all of your attention on it and slowly discover, perhaps we could say rediscover, this very familiar sound and how your organ at home speaks this sound. Now, um, I know that this is how organ builders used to temper fifths uh, around the time of Bach, when well temperament became a thing. They didn't have any tuning devices, they didn't have any, there was no iPhone. Uh, so they just listened to the beats and used their watches. So actually what you're doing now is, it's a listening exercise, but it's also a very ancient organ building technique. Organ builders needed to be able to identify those, those beatings. And in fact, maybe some of you can tune your own organs at home and uh, the reeds, perhaps. And this is exactly uh, what an organ tuner has to do. The organ tuner has to listen to the beats, completely lose themselves in the sound, and try to eliminate those beats. Now, in this case, we're celebrating those beats. We're not trying to eliminate them. Let's try a different interval. So maybe you can try it with a fifth, maybe you can try it with a sixth, a seventh. Let's try with a minor second. A minor second has two tones, they're almost the same tone, so they're going to clash and beat against each other. The lower you go on the console, the slower the beats are going to be. The higher you go, the higher the beats are going to be. So let's, let's try something that's an octave lower. Maybe a 
C3, C sharp 3, crunchy. It's almost a nervous sound. It's jivering and jittering and quivering, sorry, composing new words. And there's also a second level of beating I can hear in there. Maybe that has to do with the airflow. It's a very interesting, complex sound, this. How does it sound if you're close to the instrument? How does it sound when you're far away? You can also try a very wide interval. And very wide intervals will have different beating patterns. Let's try a G with something quite high. Let's say the highest B flat on the keyboard. You can hear the completely clear sound of that very high B flat. And it's almost in complete balance with this very, it's almost an absent sound, the G. If we take the B flat away, that G has a very special sound. Maybe that we could save that for part one, of the exercise. It's barely sounding. It's trying to sound. There's a lot of there's a lot of dust in the sound, but the B flat completely takes over. To me, this could sound like feedback. It could sound like an electronic hum. It could sound like a machine. It could sound like an alarm. Get into your fantasy. What could this be other than an organ? Of course, it's always going to be an organ, but it could be another thing too. Now what you want to do in the next part of the exercise is simply change the stop. The method is exactly the same. We used flute harmonique. Let's try cornet. I have here a cornet five. Ooh, it's definitely a cornet. This perfect fifth is quite dirty. It's moving back and forth, it's jiggling a little bit. Almost triplets at quarter note equals 60. The beats are very pronounced. If you can bring your attention just to those beats and completely focus on them and try to ignore the rest of it, this is a very interesting mental challenge you can undertake. Uh, if you're an organ builder, you, you have to be able to listen like this. You have to be able to identify all aspects uh, of the sound. So if you want to make the exercise a little bit more challenging, you can add three weights, or four weights, or five weights. And when I say challenging, I, I guess I don't mean challenging. I guess I mean more, more deep. You will cause more frequencies to sound at the same time, and you will perhaps increase the size of the ocean. Uh, so if I use all five weights and choose Principle eight. I'm going to randomly place them down. I didn't prepare this. It's just how I feel today. Forget that it's a chord. Listen to it as if it were one thing, with all of its complex beating patterns, all of the complex timbral information. And that's just a principle. But if you wanted, look, um, there's no way I could look at my hands. I have pretty big hands, but there's no way that I could play this chord. You would need two people for this exercise. But these weights do just a perfect job. There's no way that, that I could play a chord uh, like that on the organ with my hands. So this also leaves your hands free to change the stops. So if you want, you could simply change the stop and you get a completely different sound, a completely different timbre, a completely different set of frequencies. And the next step is, you've got it, add complexes of registers. So not just one, not just two, but maybe three, four, five. You can build this at the organ. You can just stay here and add things to your heart's content. Maybe we might want to try a, v a very loud one, not so soft, but very, very rich in overtones.
just listen. I feel like I could listen to that for easily 20 minutes. If you wanted to explore the registration possibilities in your organ a little more, you could, you could just try it with flutes. You could try it with just reeds. So maybe, maybe this is a good one, just reeds. You can change the manuals as well. And this is the positive. Oh. Beautiful clarinet sound. If you have an organ that has small boxes or choir boxes, you could try listening with them closed. Oh, sorry, wrong. You could put the tremolo on. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to happen. <laughs> Great. So I don't know what's going on, but uh, I think we have a little bit of uh, air loss, which is fantastic. Listen to that sound. The organ is speaking as it shouldn't, perhaps. And this is something that I'm very interested in and that I do in my own music, because the tuning now has gone slightly wonky. And uh, usually organists do this with, uh, if you have slider chests at home, you can just pull out a stop halfway or three quarters of the way, but in any case, not full. If you have an organ uh, or if the wind supply is available to you, you could take some bricks uh, off of the wind supply, um, off of the bellows, which creates a little bit of an underblowing effect uh, like this. And there's so many things you can do. A lot of organs don't have those possibilities. Some do, some don't. And I think it's, it's about what, finding what works for you. Um, uh, it's quite a surprise. I really wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Fantastic. Perfect. I wonder if we couple the récit to the positif, that's possible, here it is, and then we add a stop on the récit that's rather soft, maybe um, a gamba, a no, flute harmonique. And then, you hear that? No, chimney flute. Fantastic. You should perform the exercise also with stops pulled out halfway. If you again have access to the, to the bellows, just take off some of the weights. Make sure you put them on after. Um, if your organ reacts to, uh, to when you shut it down, if the, if the air slowly flows out of the instrument and doesn't stop right away, you could also experiment with those things. It's all about rediscovering the sound that your organ offers to you. So the third part of this tutorial, if you're still with me, is to take you through, sorry, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop that, is to take you through a short piece I composed just for the occasion because I think it's great that you share these new sounds that you found in your very familiar organ, your newly augmented organ. I'm sure it's, uh, it's nice that you know uh, that you found these new things in the sound, but isn't it great to share? Uh, and I think it's also maybe the organist's task to train the congregation also to listen in a certain way. If you have a congregation, maybe you're playing in a different place. But. So I've composed a short piece. Uh, you can play it almost in any situation. It's based on, based on a chant tune. The thing you need for this are five weights like I have here. You'd better do it with weights because you're gonna have to move the weights a little bit like this when you're performing the piece and skewers or coffee stir sticks can get a little bit tricky. So you're going to need weights and that's it. If you have stops that you can have pulled, 
Absolutely. If you have an air supply that you can have fun with by removing some of the weights, sure, absolutely do it. You need two manuals. If you don't have two manuals, you can also play it, but then that means that someone else has to play the melody. For example, a C instrument, a choir could sing it. It's set to a very well-known chant tune, and we'll take a look at that in part three.